The Yawi is one of several names given to a hominid reported to live in the Australian wilderness. The creature has its roots in Aboriginal oral history. As is the case with the North American Sasquatch, many people discount the existence of the Yawi. Yeah, I looked up and sure enough, I saw something walking up there and it was on two legs and it was not an animal, it wasn't a kangaroo, it was walking bipedally like a person. A thief in the night. Okay, we're loaded up and ready to go. I'm going to Lake Yurunga this time. And it's been a long time between kayak trips and this is a quick overnighter. Quite a long paddle, it's going to be 26k round trip but I'm already running late. I had to go shopping and get uh, various things that I didn't have. Um, so hopefully this time we have everything that we need. Um, and this is going to be an alcohol free trip. Um, always safer when you're on your own not to have a drink. Okay, we're um, all loaded up and um, um, no tripod, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, we're ready to go. Um, got a whole load of food, nothing light, unfortunately. Lots of tins and things that you shouldn't take kayaking. We're gonna be sitting very low in the water. It's fresh water, so it's going to be a very long and slow paddle, but um, spectacular scenery. You go up through a gorge and hopefully I'm there about midday um, when the sun's nice and high, so it won't be totally freezing. Uh, it's about 22 degrees today, so it'll be cool, probably cooler down in the valley. Um, I've brought two sleeping bags because um, I'm assuming that in the hammock it's going to be really cold, so I'll probably use one as an under blanket. And um, fingers crossed we don't freeze to death tonight. Bye. Just arrived Kangaroo Valley. I wasn't going to stop here, but uh, I've realised I haven't got any bug spray, so there's no way I'm going to spend an overnight next to the river without some bug spray, so. No doubt it's going to cost me a million dollars because this is a little bit of a tourist trap, as beautiful as it is. Some beautiful views of mist shrouded mountains, and as you can see, lots and lots of tourists. But uh, we'll be out of here shortly, hopefully. I'm about uh, 15 k's from the dam, and this is the road that uh, leads in. It's all sealed, 21 k's from Kangaroo uh, Valley and uh, I am stoked and ready to go so uh, I'll jump back in the car and um, when I get there I'm going to show you all the stuff we're going to try and load into the yak um, we'll see what we have to leave behind because I think we're going to be pretty um, pretty full and we'll be wondering whether we can actually uh, float after we get it all in speak later And we have to try and get all of this into the boat, so I think it's going to be really interesting. We'll see what we can do. It doesn't get much more beautiful than this. If you look back down here, you can just make out the dam wall. And I've got a, probably another 12 or so k's in this direction here um, before it gets dark. So it's going to be a, a um, longish trip. Hold on, I'll try and do a selfie. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be a, um, a longish trip. And uh, it looks like I'm not being followed up here. I saw a few um, trailers in the car park, which is always a bit of a worry full of uh, what would have been canoes. But uh, I think it's Duke of Edinburgh. I think it was Mariah College, actually, coming back. And they've all come back now. So 
I am hoping that when I get to Fossica's flat, um, if I don't have it to myself, it's going to be fairly quiet. That's the, that's the hope and prayer anyway. Anyway, I uh, better get paddling. Got a long way to go. I am in a living, breathing um, Arthur Boyd uh, painting, most definitely. Uh, look, all, looking all around me, this is the landscape that inspired Arthur Boyd. Uh, he lived on the Shahaven River. And uh, everywhere I look, you can see shades of uh, his uh, practice as an artist. Sorry for me getting all wanky and arty on you here. Um, I'm an art teacher, so I can't help it. Um, but uh, yeah, absolutely magnificent cliffs here. I'll just um, stop recording in a tick and just give you a bit of a scene. And of course, you can hear that ubiquitous tone of the bellbird. Absolutely gorgeous. And uh, no one's following me up here, so I might even have the place to myself. I'm hoping so. We have come to the part of the trip rather aptly named the Petrified Forest. And these are trees that were here prior to the dam being built. And as you can see, I imagine they would have logged a lot of trees out. But this is obviously a stand of trees that they didn't get to. And because they've been um, waterlogged for such a long time, they've obviously died. And. Uh, yeah, they're a, a bit of a landmark on the trip across to Fossica's flat. It's rather ironic that uh, this sojourn with nature, unspoiled nature, is actually the result of a dam being built. So um, I imagine this river, had it not been dammed, you probably could ride a kayak on it, but you'd be going in one direction because it would be flowing down to the ocean. So you'd be going from here to Tanara. You wouldn't be going the opposite direction. And you could still um, put in a canoe below the dam, as far as I know. And if the water level's not too bad or there's a bit of a spill over the dam, you can still do that to this day. But uh, this experience of the, the river is very, very different to how it would have been prior to them damming it. But uh, it's... Very beautiful nonetheless. This is the little beach that uh, I came in on nice little sandy bank and this is the view check it out And that's the hammock with the fly set up. So we've um, hopefully got a nice comfy set up.
Okay, we've got the um, hot water on. We're on our little fuel stove that's powered by Metho. It's made out of an old uh, Aldi cat food tin. And we've got the uh, coffee there and, and a Danish from Woolworths and a view that, uh, you know, is priceless. And I am starving, so I cannot wait to tuck into all this. Yeah, baby. A bit of that UHT crappy milk and a couple of ants as well. Always nice to have a couple of ants with your cup of coffee. I'm just gonna put the whole lot in. Got one more for tomorrow for breakfast. Ants are gonna get it anyway if I leave it out. Coffee time. Oh, that looks good. Still hungry, the uh, the Danish didn't even touch the side, so um, we've got a bit of guacamole here and a brie, and I'm going to eat that whole thing myself because, hey, it's only a mini brie, so it's not that, that big. And um, some crostini um, bruschetta toast, I think it's rosemary and garlic, so that should be very nice, and we'll save a few of those crostinis for the, the Irish stew that I'm having. Watching the um, shadows change and the light change across the top of this cliff face is way better than having the internet at home, I've got to say. Who needs Wi-Fi when you can just sit here and watch this? And eat some brie. Uh, we are having the um, Campbell's Irish Stew, um, chunky Irish, and I was um, hoping to uh, cook over the fire, but um, I really don't know whether I should risk it, because um, the pots that I have don't have hooks on them, and uh, if they end up in the fire, there goes my dinner. So um, we'll see, we'll see how we go, I might, I might still do it, um, it'd be nice to uh, give, it a, give it a shot. I've got a clamp that I can pick the pot up with, so hey, let's do it. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Yum yum, chunky Irish stew. Hey, this is a little bit quicker than the um than cooking on a tiny little metho stove already boiling. Ah, oh, freezing! Luckily it's not too bad. Oh.
time for some um, creepy Shoalhaven River stories. I've stayed by myself on quite a few occasions on the Nepean River and um, always felt quite uh, safe and, um, and secure, almost nestled um, in the little valley that I stay in on uh, Erskine Creek. Um, this place is a little bit different. It's, um, the river's very dark, um, tall cliffs, and it just has a different vibe. I wouldn't say it's an unpleasant vibe, but um, there's moments where it's just very, very, I think the, um, the, the romantics would use the word sublime. Um, it's beautiful, but at the same time quite terrifying. Um, weird thing happened to me um, just before it got dark. I could hear this cracking branches and, and whatnot high up on the ridge on the other side of the river. And um, I thought, well, there can't be a path up there. The, 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 the bank embankment's really, really steep, um, very steep and very precarious. And yet I looked up and sure enough, I saw something walking up there. And it was on two legs and it was not an animal. It wasn't a kangaroo. It was walking bipedally like a person. And um, yeah, I'm not going to say the Y word. Yeah, I will say the Y word. I think it was a Yowie. Well, actually, it probably wasn't a Yowie. It's probably someone orienteering. But um, uh, it was quite a bizarre place to be um, going for a stroll. And I couldn't make um, proper sort of eye contact. And as quickly as I saw whatever it was, it just disappeared into the scrub. I'm going to sleep well tonight. Not. Well, this is the, uh, the fire's last hurrah. I um, jumped in the boat um, after the swim. Uh, went for a shirtless uh, paddle up the river. boat was nice and light. It was a lot of fun. Went a bit further than I probably should have. And um, then on the way back, it was getting very, very dark. It gets dark very quickly. We're in a valley here. Um, I was hoping um, the fire would keep going. There was a little bit of fire on the bank um, for me to sort of see where the campsite was, but luckily I'd left a lot of colourful stuff on the um, on the embankment over there. So um, I was able to find the, the campsite. And, um, yeah, I'll probably just watch these last few uh, logs um, burn down and um, probably hit the sack. It's been a long and very enjoyable day. Um, I've had a really, really good time. A thief in the night. Um, I was going to try to get it off him, but he's got pretty big claws, and as you know, um, Australia has the um, biggest rats in the world. Actually, they're not rats; they're like kind of rat. They're called a possum, so they're um, they're a marsupial rat. And uh, <laughs> this one's decided to partake in some human fare. In this case, guacamole and. I think that's preferable to him actually deciding to come and eat part of me because um, these um, animals have been known to um, start gnawing on human limbs if they're not uh, given uh, something else to chew on. So um, yeah, it's obvious he's been um, raiding campsites for quite a while judging by the size of him and um, yeah, I would have gotten off him but he's pretty much finished it anyway so I'll let him enjoy himself. Knock yourself out there mate. And um, his friends are obviously not going to want to go near him after this. Um, he's got green slime all over his face. <laughs> You're a funny looking fella. Okay, um, I know I was telling um, scary stories last night about um, Yowie's up on this, um, this ridge that's behind me. And um, yeah, it, uh, it's amazing what the um, human imagination can do. Anyway, um, the Yowie mystery has been solved. <coughs> yes, um, it was uh, some feral goats <laughs> crawling around up there. Um, and that's why they weren't making eye contact with me too, because they're pretty antisocial. Anyway, um, yeah, this place is teeming with nature, both native and um, feral. And uh, some native animals that are feral as well and think that they're Mexican. Anyway, um, <clears throat> like I said, I'm going to um, 
have some uh, breakfast in a tick and uh, fire up the uh, the coffee and make myself some oats and then we'll be on our way I think okay um, it's around 8 30 sun is starting to shine and it looks like it's going to be a magnificent day and yes you can see it is still beautiful here and I was going to film this in 1080p but yes camera battery is flat and I do have a, a backup um, but I forgot the charging cable so um, we're going to have to do this on the iPhone which isn't as nice um, <clears throat> this is my little security shield that I devised um, after much um, being woken up by Pedro the Mexican marsupial who decided uh, the boat was the go-to place for all things great and Mexican and after coming out about four times and prodding him with my foot and saying hey Pedro you know the restaurant is closed sorry it's a really bad Mexican accent um, he just kept coming back so I devised this security shield and I put the um, 10 litres of water on top of it thinking that would be a, a good idea and Pedro came back and decided uh, he was just going to claw his way through the water bag and um, so I came back out and got my good friend the uh, kayak paddle over there and just showed him um, a little bit of um, coercion and nothing nasty, nothing that the RSPCA needs to know about just enough to let him know that um, you know he's going to need to go somewhere else to find his Mexican food um, anyway that seemed to solve the problem and Pedro didn't return We have ignition. Realised something interesting about this whole cooking setup, and um, that was one that if you pour a little bit of metho on the ground, provided obviously there's no fire hazards around, it actually heats the whole assembly up. And quite often these little camping stoves that are fuel based have a lot what's known as a priming pan underneath them that you throw a bit of metho in, and you light that first, and it heats the whole show up. So that certainly made things start and go a lot quicker. And um, obviously cooking with just the right amount. Um, last time I boiled water, I boiled probably double the amount I needed. This time I actually poured it into the um, coffee plunger and then poured it back in. So I knew exactly um, how much I needed and it boiled in like about four minutes. So, and, and on one lot of metho, last, last night I had to use two. And obviously less wind is also, um, you know, going to make it cook a lot quicker. Anyway, this has been um, Camping Tips 101 from... Someone doesn't have a clue. I'm going to eat my oats now and plunge my coffee and sit down and ponder the uh, mysteries of the universe. Nothing like a little bit of Uncle Toby's uh, instant glue and uh, some coffee. Anyway, yeah, they're the Uncle Toby's instant sachets. And um, not bad, actually. And I'm probably going to need it because uh, a little bit of a paddle home. But uh, it's certainly going to be a really, really pleasant day to do it. And um, basically, yeah, I don't really want to go, but um, I'm definitely going to come back and use this spot and um, hopefully come back with friends. Um, I can bring lots of Mexican food for Pedro and uh, really enjoy this space. Giant Goanna. Wonder if they like Mexican food. This fella is positively prehistoric. Okay, hammock's gone, and we have got everything back in or on the boat, so we're ready to uh, rock and roll. This is the spot that, um, the infamous spot that Steve and I stayed at the first time, 
um, as you can see it's very very enclosed by trees and uh, the beach isn't quite as nice and people have uh, started fires there but um, probably not the smartest thing to do because um, there's a lot of trees around probably a good chance for a branch to fall on your head too and there's a rope ladder on this tree that wasn't here last time obviously people have been climbing up and diving off that